Hello everybody and welcome to the next installment of my bookshelf tour. This is all my nonfiction. I just have this one big nonfiction shelf over here and then we also have a little bit of overflow of like coffee table style books that are under the coffee table. So those are all my nonfiction books. They'll be a little shorter today. So let's just get into them. The first one is Know It All Shakespeare. 50 Key Aspects of the Bard's Works, Life, and Legacy, Each Explained in Under a Minute by Ross Barber. Vegan Cookies Invade Your Cookie Jar by Isa Chandra Moskowitz and Terry Hope Romero. The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid a Memoir by Bill Bryson. Mad Girl's Love Song, Sylvia Plath, and Life Before Ted by Andrew Wilson. Killers of the Flower Moon, the Osage Murders, and the Birth of the FBI by David Gran. H.R.C. State Secrets and the Rebirth of Hillary Clinton by Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes. Educated, a memoir by Tara Westover. Long Past Stopping, a memoir by Oren Canfield. And yes, I definitely bought this book because the cover has a clown on it. It's what I do, I love clowns. Yes Please by Amy Poehler. A Sense of the World, How a Blind Man Became History's Greatest Traveler by Jason Roberts. Cousins in Love, The Letters of Lydia Dugard, 1665 through 1672, and I got this book kind of as a joke. It was free at like a book sale when I was in college and my friends and I just had a joke about me being obsessed with cousin marriages. I wasn't really obsessed with cousin marriages, but I did have a logical argument that cousin marriages should be legal based on a lot of extraneous factors. I don't need to go into it, but it was a whole spiel that I had that I got made fun of relentlessly for. <laughs> But anyway, I got this as kind of a joke about that inside joke with my friends. And now I own this book, so that's that. Okay, next we have Running with Scissors by Augustine Burroughs. Read, The Next Generation of American Writers, Teenage Girls, On What Fires Up Their Lives Today edited by Amy Goldwasser. And I got this because Haley G. Hoover has an essay published in it. She is not really posting videos anymore, but she's like an old school YouTuber. I love her. She's pretty much my favorite YouTuber of all time, honestly. And so I just really wanted to read the essay she wrote and get this book because she was published in it like way back when she was a teenager, obviously. So it's just is really cool. On the Other Side of Freedom, The Case for Hope by DeRay McKesson. Life is like a musical. How to Live, Love, and Lead Like a Star by Tim Fetterly. The Magic Words, Writing Great Books for Children and Young Adults by Cheryl B. Klein. The Writer's Portable Mentor, A Guide to Art, Craft, and the Writing Life by Priscilla Long. The Pocket Scavenger by Carrie Smith. Wreck This Journal, also by Carrie Smith. 
Doing It, Let's Talk About Sex by Hannah Witten. Hannah Witten is a YouTuber that I really like, and she published this book, so I picked it up just because I really like her. This is a Rajat's Thesaurus that I'm honestly not sure if this is my book or if this belongs to my sister. I, I'm a little confused because if it's mine, I definitely needed to get rid of it, but it's on my shelf for right now, so here it is. There's a nicer one coming in like a second here. <laughs> um, first, I have this Webster Dictionary, just a little dictionary, classic. Gotta have one. And then here is my nice Rajat's thesaurus of English words and phrases. I've had this forever. I don't use it very often, but I really like owning it. And then this is my life application study Bible. So I personally am not a religious or spiritual person at all, but my dad is. And so he gave this to me as a gift when I think I graduated high school. And it's this really nice, like, beautiful edition of a Bible and it has my name embossed in the cover, hence me covering up my last name with my thumb there. I'm pretty sure that you can probably find my last name somewhere on the internet if you do a lot of digging, but I try to just kind of not voluntarily divulge it if I have the option. So anyway, this is my Bible. I don't really actively use it or read it, but I feel like it's nice to have and it was a nice gift for my dad. So there's that. All right, on my next shelf down, I have Take the Cannoli, Stories from the New World by Sarah Vowell. And The Partly Cloudy Patriot, also by Sarah Vowell. And then over here, we have a few books of my sister's. The whole bottom shelf is hers, but those were just a few extras that popped up that didn't fit in the bottom. So we have my two Sarah Vowell books, two Sarah Vowell books that she owns that obviously they work together, and then three other random books that just didn't fit on the bottom shelf. So they're right here. We're not going to talk about them because they're not mine. So... Moving on to Privilege Revealed, How Invisible Preference Undermines America by Stephanie M. Wildman. This is an old textbook of mine that I've held on to. Communism, What It Is and How It Works by Ina Schlesinger and Jonah Bluestein. Five thousand days like this one in American Family History by Jane Brox. In Between, Memoir of an Integration Baby by Mark Morrison Reed. Lucky by Alice Siebold. Just Kids by Patti Smith. Never Broken, Songs Are Only Half the Story by Jewel. Lipstick Jihad, A Memoir of Growing Up Iranian in America and American in Iran by Azadeh Moavini. Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. The Friend Who Got Away. 20 Women's True Life Tales of Friendships That Blew Up, Burned Out, or Faded Away by Jenny Offal and Alyssa Chappell. My Mad Fat Diary by Ray Earle. The Glass Castle. By Jeanette Walls. Negro Land, a memoir by Margot Jefferson. Refuge, an unnatural history of family and place by Terry Tempest Williams. Wild, 
From Lost to Found on the Pacific Crest Trail by Cheryl Strayed. The Other Wes Moore, One Name, Two Fates by Wes Moore. I started this book a while ago and I actually DNF'd it, but it's something that I think I want to come back to after giving it some time, so I'm still holding on to it for now. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Devil in the White City. Murder, Magic, and Madness at the Fair that Changed America by Eric Larson. Queen of the Road. The true tale of 47 states, 22,000 miles, 200 shoes, two cats, one poodle, a husband, and a bus with a will of its own by Doreen Orion. The Boys in the Bunkhouse, Servitude and Salvation in the Heartland by Dan Barry. The Overspent American, Why We Want What We Don't Need by Juliet B. Shore. The Spy Who Fell to Earth, My Relationship with the Secret Agent Who Rocked the Middle East by Aaron Bregman. On My Own Two Feet, A Modern Girl's Guide to Personal Finance by Manisha Thacker and Sharon Kedar. Check these out. One Librarian's Catalog of the 200 Coolest Best and Most Important Books You'll Ever Read by Gina Sheridan. The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. An Education by Lynn Barber. Bark If You Love Me by Louise Bernacow. Love Lucy by Lucille Ball. Off the Map by Hib Chekina and Kika Cat. And the last books over here aren't really real books. They're like activity, sort of fun games and stuff. So I have Mad Libs, Happily Ever Mad Libs, Adult Mad Libs, Santa Baby, Harvest Moon Crosswords, another crossword book, another crossword book, Keep Calm and Crossword On. I think these are New York Times Mondays, maybe they're easy ones. And then a book of nonograms, because I love nonograms. And that's the last book on my nonfiction shelf, actually. These are my sister's books down on the very bottom shelf, so I'm just going to give you a little overview because they're all together on the same shelf, so I thought you might want to see them, but I'm not going to go over them because these are not my books. But we've got tons of foraging books and animal, wildlife, plant identification books, some memoirs, and just, you know, random nonfiction, some history, lots of stuff about gender, feminism, You can look at the titles, you can pause it and take a deeper look if you're interested, but I just wanted to give you a little overview of what the whole shelf looks like, but I'm not going to go book by book with all of these. There you go. Now we're going to move on to my little overflow of large nonfiction that I have as like coffee table books underneath my coffee table. So we have The Cat's Gallery of Western Art by Susan Herbert. Broadway Tales, Heartfelt Stories of Rescued Dogs Who Became Showbiz Superstars by Bill Berloni. How to Win at Feminism, The Definitive Guide to Having It All and Then Some. This is presented by Reductress. Dolly 
by Gil Nere, and this is just like a book about Salvador Dali with his paintings in it. Gods and Goddesses of the Movies by John Coble. 30 Reasons to Travel, Photographs and Reflections from Southeast Asia by Joel Carolet. Poetry for Young People by Emily Dickinson. I guess this could be put in my poetry collection or it could be put in my children's book collection, but I just have it here for browsing purposes. The Joy of Lettering, a creative exploration of contemporary hand lettering, typography, and illustrated typeface by Gabri Joy Kirkendall and Jacqueline Escalera. Van Gogh by Rainier Metzger and Ingo F. Walther. So that's it for the large ones. I just have these two little ones on the side here. We have Name That Movie, 100 Illustrated Movie Puzzles by Paul Rogers. And Dog Dogs by Elliot Erwitt. This is just a big book of photography of dogs. That's great. And then these are the big coffee table style books that my sister owns that are also on that shelf. And you can look at them if you want. We're not going to go over them because they're not mine and I don't have time for that. So those are all my nonfiction books. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys tomorrow with my poetry and play collections. So that's it for now. Bye.